The Giant by Karl Skalbe The giant said to his younger brother, You hold the mountain, I want to see the world. Fine, he agreed, and the younger brother takes the mountain on his shoulders, and the older brother goes into the world. All his life he had slept on his stomach and held the mountain, just like his father and his father's father, and now he stood in the open, big, stooping and clumsy. He barely stood on his feet and was wondering at the world. Everything catches his eye. Everything was so striped and colorful. All of the things had rainbows around them. He was like a young bird, in front of whom the shell breaks, and the world with all its colors and sounds rushes into its dazed soul. Putting a hand over his eyes, the giant looked into the distance, pine forests, mountains and clouds. The wind was bending the forests and chasing the clouds around. Did the giant stand there calmly? He roared from happiness and went further, free, happy and abundant. Under his arm was a piece of gold, as big as a head of a man. It had been gifted to him by the good bars for holding the mountain where their forges and chambers were so patiently. The giant walked and walked and went up a mountain. Now that he is walking down, he sees one boy herding sheep. Oh, a bug, the giant said and smiled. Against the sun bloomed the slope under the apple tree. Low white clouds slept in the sky. Not gold, not the silver in the depths of the mountain. Nothing was as bright as the slope. The giant wanted to lie down there and look around. Here probably starts the new world about which the forest fairies had told him so much about. He wandered far with the wind, misleading herdsmen and hunters, and knew a lot to talk about. Hey, hey, large one, the boy screamed. Do not embed a hole in this field once again. Where you giants sleep, their grass does not grow for three years. He was a naughty fellow. And it was not his first time with devils and giants. Listen here, boy. I want to have a little snack. Give me one sheep. Oh, the greedy hog. A whole sheep? But come to measure strength with me. If you beat me, you get the sheep. If not, then I get the piece of gold. The giant looked at the boy like a dog to an ant which crawls on its paw. To us it would be if we laid on the ground and a bug boastfully called us out. Fine, let us race, said the giant. No way, how can I race with such an oaf? Behind these bushes my brother is taking a nap. He will go in my place. The boy whistled. A rabbit jumped out of the bush, and the giant was not even able to bend down when the rabbit was already far gone. The giant grabbed a stone from the ground and crushed the stone. Now, can you do that? Oh, that is nothing. But can you squeeze the juice out of a stone? And the boy, boy pulled that piece of cheese out of his pocket and squeezed it so hard that the juices started dripping from his hands. The giant was amazed. Oh, what a weak man you are. Big bones, and that is all you have. The boy laughed. I go once more, and then goodbye. Then the giant grabbed the stone and three threw it into the air. Both, with their heads looking up, watched how it disappeared in the sky. After a while, it crashed in the field. But the boy pulled out a bird out of his pocket and let it free. See, I threw the stone into the afterworld. You will never see it again, the boy boasted. The giant waited for the stone to come back down, but only his neck grew tired from looking up. Nothing came down. He had lost. He handed the piece of gold to the boy and went on. He walked fast and heavy, leaving deep footprints into the ground. The poor giant was confused, and fear was following him at his heels. He was walking around where the shepherd was herding and the plowman was plowing. These bugs had wondrous powers. The trifle had taken his gold piece from him and had destroyed him to his core. He now was like a large tree without its core and did not believe in his arms nor legs. 
He walked and did not know where to take a step. If only another bug would not come out of the ground and pull him into another wager, someone will take three slices of his skin, then how will he live on? The forest parted, and from the mountain the giant came into a blooming Kurzem's field. Here the sky was so bright and the world so wide that his legs started to wobble, and his shadow danced on the red flower heads which grew next one to another like waves, red, green, flowers, and blossoms rose. The giant now did not where to put his arms. They were strong and large, made for hard work, but here everything was bright and light. He could only live if he had something to carry, because that is how giants were made. Just as someone could not live in hardship, the giant could not live in without hardship. He fell on his mouth in the field, and like a buffoon stretched his clumsy arms and legs. The smell of sweet honey thrusted in his mouth and nose. He pressed his teeth into, an, into the ground and began to cry. But the blooming ground laughed about his anger. Sullen and dark, the giant rose, and like a cloud in the evening, went away, where the dark green oak forest was. Old. Hundreds of years old, oaks stretched their mighty branches towards him, and in the forest the giant felt like he was amongst men, because they stood as tall as him. Gloomy and quarrelsome, he grinded his teeth, and hissed so hard that the leaves fell from the branches. Then he went after the oaks, and started pulling them out of the ground with their roots, and throwing him, them into the air. He fought with them like with men, and was happy that they fought back with real strength. Because his child's soul had already grasped the human cunning. That is, that is how he rampaged for a while, till a field stood around him. From the destroyed branches and the pulled out roots ran frightened animals and birds. Then he was tired and happy once more and walked on satisfied. But the evening was coming, from the town's smoke rose, and the giant fell into sadness again. He remembered the dark depths of the ground, heard how the pickaxes of the dwarves sounded, how the smoke knocked against the beards of the good dwarves, whose blue and red faces were melting gold and silver. All night this smoke which to him was sweeter than the smell of flowers, did not give him peace. How long did the giant wander the earth, the men of old do not know, but any child has heard about the grabber of trees, who wanders looking for work. He destroyed many forests, raging against the pile-up strength. He ravaged many fields, pulling trees with their roots out of them, but he only did it because of the suffering because he did not find the right place for him in the world, and in the end he had almost come to his end. His strength started to wither out, and once he went into a barren empty field of sand, then he wanted dirt, dirt which was fertile and was sleeping under the sand and was hiding new trees and flowers. He would drop to the ground and began to rake the sand onto his neck and shoulders, and by miracle, the earth gave him his strength back. The deeper he dug, the stronger he got. In the evening, the giant was no longer visible. There was only a mountain, which moved and grew like a molehill. It grew larger, and it could not be visible that it moved. Soon over the mountain, seeds and plantlets started falling from the wind, and after years there was the forest growing. Birds sat in branches and sung, Foxes dug themselves warm caves, but the giant slept in the depths of it, and once again listened to the dwarven pickaxes and the forges breathing and roaring. And he was so happy that he feared breathing, to not rock the bird eggs in their nests, to not startle the lovers sitting under a tree. The giant held his breath, and happiness, like a wave, stopped under his chest. The whole mountain was held up by him. 
The giant once again had something to carry. He once again was living a fulfilling life and was happy. But nor trees, nor flowers, nor birds knew that they were rocking on the back of a dead giant, because Havis, he was so silent in the depths, as silent as one gets from such happiness.